Right. Praise the Lord. Here we go. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Pastor Wayne Voss, and this is the Tuesday Trumpet. Amen. And uh, once again, I'm thrilled, delighted that you saw fit to join me during the noonday hour. Amen. During your lunchtime. Praise God. And uh, the Lord has given us a, a table and uh, a meal to feast upon today. Amen. So I want to go without uh, just uh, not doing any announcements or anything like that i'd like to take advantage of my of the time that i've been allotted amen let me let's just go on straight to work let me encourage you to uh get you a good king james bible word for word translation follow along as i always remind the people take notes and write down the scriptures and uh and uh, judge everything I preach and teach upon the Word of the Lord. For the Word of the Lord is right, and all of God's works are in truth. So we need to define and understand what that truth is today. Amen. And uh, so I'm going to begin, and I'm going to cover, hopefully cover a good bit of ground. So it would be good for you to, 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 to write these scriptures down, come back once again, study them for yourself. Amen. Praise God. It's a beautiful day here in Greenwood, Mississippi, to share the gospel. And I just thank the Lord for uh, allowing me to be a part of what he's doing in this final hour of the church age. Amen. I'm going to begin in 1 Thessalonians. Let me, uh, let's, let's, no, we're in 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Praise the Lord. So find your place there and let's begin. And uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in, in verse, uh, let's just begin in verse 9. Let me see for just a second here. Let, let's go back to first, let's go back to first Thessalonians. I'm sorry. Let's do this. Amen. I've been so excited about uh, sharing the gospel today. Let me look at something real quick. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 through 12. Let's, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and beginning in verse, I'm going to begin in verse 9. Amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 beginning in verse 9. Amen. And I'm, I'm going to deal, I'm giving this a title, uh, this lesson message today, a title a uh, bad attitude or the mind of Christ. Which is it? Is it a bad attitude that we have or is it the mind of Christ? I'm going to deal with that today. Amen. And uh, it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 9, and I'm having to, because of the time frame, uh, I'm having to condense some things. I encourage you to study the words, the, the scriptures before, what I present to you, the scriptures after. Amen. And uh, let's, let's look what it says at the beginning in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. Speaking of even, he says, even him. And that's speaking of the Antichrist that will come on the scene not far away. Uh, we won't be here, amen. The church will be taken out when he shows up and reveals himself. Amen. We'll, we'll be gone, amen. I'm not going through the tribulation. If you want to stay here and go through it, that's your business. I won't be here. Amen. I will be gone. Praise God. And it says, even him, the Antichrist who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Amen. Now, the thing of it is, these things, they're actually uh, beginning today. They're, they're always, Satan has always presented to us uh, signs and lying wonders. Amen. And the sad thing is the... Uh, the church that doesn't uh, use the scroll, the cross as their instrument of discernment, amen, the cross must be our instrument of discernment, amen. If it's not about the cross, it's not of God, amen. It's that simple, amen. God's all wrapped up in, in the cross, what Jesus there did, amen. Anything apart from that, we're to turn from it, avoid it, amen, and not be partakers and partners with that. That's what the Bible teaches us, amen. And it says, but we, once again, it's going to increase. It's going to be greater when the church is taken out of the way because the church is the one that's withholding or hindering, amen, a full-blown manifestation of the Antichrist at this present time. When the church, that's, and when I say church, I'm speaking of the cross-preaching church, amen. That is, that's the church that God identifies 
the, the remnant that he has, the one that is preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified and in, in warning of everything else. Amen. That has to go with it. Paul said we preach, we warn, and we teach. Without the warning, we're not fulfilling the mandate of the Lord upon the gospel minister, uh, his church, and, and, and his body. Amen. And he said in verse 10, he said, With all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them who perish, listen to this, because they receive not the love of the truth. Amen. Uh, the, the apostate church today and those that will soon welcome the Antichrist with open arms. The stage is being set in the modern day church for the Antichrist to just walk to march on the scene and for him to be embraced with open arms. And, and, and it says, but it's because the people love not the truth. They love not the truth. They love what tickles the ear. Amen. They love, they love what appeases the flesh. They love what motivates them. Amen. Uh, that motivational speaker. These are the things that they're glorying in. These are the things that, that uh, they love. They love those things which gratifies the flesh. The cross is going to tear all of that down. You see, so the, the apostate church, they, they desire not the things that be of the truth, amen. They desire the things which be of the spirit of antichrist. What is the spirit of antichrist? Well, it's to be anti-cross. The anti, to be anti-cross is the spirit of antichrist, amen. And, and, and the, the, the cross is the mind of Christ, amen, and I hope to bring these things out more and more as we go along. Just stay with me, amen. And it says, with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness, unrighteousness, righteousness describes our right standing with God. It's only achieved through faith in the cross, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21, amen. So uh, unrighteousness is those that are apart from standing at Calvary, embracing the cross and being determined to know nothing else, amen. You can't be in right standing any place else other than the cross. There you find the righteousness, right standing with God imputed toward us, justified by faith in the Lamb and what he did at Calvary, amen. And he said it's because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So it's really simple, amen. The, the, the truth that's being spoken of here, amen, is the truth that's saved. Now, uh, most everybody, I hope, knows that the truth that saves is the, the shedding of the blood of the Lamb, what Jesus did at Calvary. He, he was crucified that we might be saved, that we might be delivered, amen, that we might have all things that pertains to life and godliness. Romans chapter 8, verse 32, I'm a Bible believer. I believe what the Bible says, for the word of the Lord is right, and all of God's works are done in truth. That truth is Christ in him crucified. If you want to know where God's working, that's where he's working. He's working working, amen, on that rock, Christ in him crucified, the pierced rock. That's where you find him standing. That's where you find him moving. That's where you find him working, amen. Now let's read on. And he said, and for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion. Those that have rejected the cross amen, are of the spirit of anti-Christ, and God has sent these, the Bible says, uh, he's allowed them to embrace a strong, and notice it says, uh, a strong delusion. Uh, so it's so strong that even when they are in darkness, you know, the Christ in him crucified is the light, amen. Jesus said, I am the light, but it's the cross that turns that light on, amen. John 12, 32, amen, I believe it is, or 23, John 12, 
30, 20, 32, amen, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, speaking of his death on the cross, I will draw all men unto me, amen. So there's your drawing page, place, there's the place where the light is seen at Calvary's cross, amen. The, the cross is the light switch that turns the light of Christ on in us and with us. That puts us on the path of the just, amen, where well, that light increases, it grows on that path, amen, that narrow path that Jesus said, few there be that find it. It's not hard to find, but it's few there be that desires to go that away. Broad, anything other than this light of Calvary, anything other than that is a path to destruction. Most are going that way. That's what Jesus said, meaning, amen, few are on the path of the just. Few are walking in the light of Calvary. Many are going the broad way because there's no offense there presently, amen. There's there's no rub there. There's no offense. The, the people can claim Christianity and just live however they desire. So they're living by the flesh instead of according to the Spirit. The Spirit is always going to deliver us uh, to Calvary. The Spirit is always going to deliver us to the death of the cross. Amen. There we're saved. There we find victory. That's the truth that God works in. Amen. And he said, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So once again, uh, the, the, the darkness that they're in becomes light. And their, and their, uh, their popularity becomes the truth. The, the, their popularity becomes the outlet for truth, amen. Now, now understand, just go back to what Jesus said in Matthew, broad be the way. That means that way is popular, amen, with the majority of the church, amen. And so you have many that are moving people, they're deceivers, distractors, and influencers. They're moving many over to the broad, to the broad way that leads to destruction, and they're doing it uh, through their popularity, and they become more and more popular on that route to, to destruction because they're tickling the ears of the people just as uh, Paul would talk about in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3 and verse 4 they will not be able to endure sound doctrine sound doctrine is the cross Calvary Christ and him crucified but they will, uh, they will turn their ears from the truth amen and they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They surround themselves with teachers, preachers, prophets, pastors, whatever title they fall under. Amen. They will surround themselves with these people that will tell them what they desire to hear. Amen. Instead of desiring righteousness and truth. But God will allow them, verse 11, and hand them over to whatever they love. Amen. He will just give them over to whatever they love. Amen. When the trumpet sounds, God is going to leave these with what they're loving at the present time. But those are clinging to the cross. Amen. That's the ones that God uh, Christ is coming back for. Amen. Those that are clinging to the cross, their light is shining bright. Amen. Because because the light of Christ is shining in them and through them. Amen. Praise God. In their heart, they had this treasure. Amen. They had this treasure in earthen vessels. And that treasure is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, who he is, what he did at Calvary. And it says in verse seven, uh, 11, for this cause shall God send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. And we see that today. We see that manifesting today. But now, amen, we have a tendency to want to look at that and read that, and we put that off somewhere in the future, and we have, uh, we, we lack applying that to where we are right now today. Well, John the Beloved, in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3, applied these very words 
uh, that the Apostle Paul spoke to the church in Thessalonica, he applied that to where we are today. First John chapter four and verse three, he said, "Every spirit." Remember, we just we just got through talking about the spirit of Antichrist, and anything that's Antichrist is of the spirit of Antichrist. So John the Beloved, amen, the, the apostle known as the apostle of love, he brought great strong warning to the church of God. Amen, First John 4 and 3, and it says, and every spirit that confesses, in other words, their confession is not our, we are determined to know nothing but Christ and Him crucified, but their confession, proclaiming, and, and they're, they're determined to know something other than the gospel of God. And the gospel of God is Christ and Him crucified. And give us another. It's one faith, one gospel, one spirit, and it's all wrapped up in the blood of Jesus Christ and what He did at Calvary. And every spirit that confesses not Amen. And the thing of it is, is not so much that you speak against the cross. Amen. It's that you just simply ignore it. Amen. By your actions, you are rejecting the truth, and that puts you in the place of those that are speaking against it. Amen. Your silence speaks loudly. Those that are silent uh, of the cross, those that are silent as it pertains to being determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified, those that are silent and draw back from the warning that the Bible is instructs us uh, as part of that gospel that makes us a good minister of the gospel, amen. So John, being a good minister of the gospel, warns the body of Christ. And he said, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come into flesh is not of God. It's not of God. Now let me qualify what's being said here for just a moment. Notice uh, what God through the apostle John is saying is not of God. It's saying that, 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 that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, not come in the flesh, amen, uh, is not of God. And this, look, let me, let, let me go ahead and read that. And this is that spirit this is that spirit is plural, plural, excuse me, present right now. That means that this spirit is already at work, not just in the world, but more so in the church. Amen. Because it's, uh, you know, Satan is subtle. He's a schemer. Amen. So if he can win over the church, amen, he, 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 he knows that they can no longer influence the world that he already has. Amen. So let me read it again. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof you have heard that it should come. Yes. The, 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 the person, amen, of the Antichrist who will come holding hands with the, with the false prophet, amen, it says, and is and look what it says. And even now, ladies and gentlemen, John applied it to his day and time. We must also apply it to our day and time. This spirit of Antichrist is now already working in the body of Christ today. When after Christ shows up, he's going to come being very religious. Remember, he's going to come working lying signs and wonders. But the church, is, uh, which is not really the church, amen, is the people are going to be made to buy off on it, amen, and they're being prepped, they're being prepared uh, for that as we speak today. There's a great falling away. This is what the Bible says in the body of Christ, amen. The stage is being set for the Antichrist to come on the scene. And even now, so it's even more so today, even now already is it in the world. But let me go back and qualify what the apostle is speaking of here when he says, uh, those that confess not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh, 
is not of God. Really, all of that is, is speaking of the cross. Amen. Those who confess not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. Well, here's your answer and uh, uh, your uh, understanding of that found in Colossians chapter 1 in verse 22. Paul said, in the body of his flesh. See, there it is again. In the body of his flesh. Amen. Those that come confessing not that he came in the flesh. Amen. John is tying that to Christ's death on the cross. Yes, his incarnation, but his incarnation is worthless. His incarnation is worthless if he did not go to the cross as a man. Amen. Our representative man. Our Redeemer, amen, the one that brought of the propitiation, amen, that made atonement for sin, that delivered us from sin and the grip of the, of the enemy and anything and everything that he would use against us. We have victory over all of those things that desire to lord over us through the cross. Col Colossians chapter 2 in verse 15, the greatest show on earth, as Pastor Scotty Williams says, amen. Where every power and every principality, amen, was defeated at Calvary's cross. So no wonder, amen, that the, uh, the, the devil is wanting to try to make the people think that our determination is a bad attitude. Think about that. And the enemy works through the, through the church to influence the people to turn away from the truth that God works in and the word of God that is right. Amen. So he said there, Colossians 1 and 22, in the body of his flesh through death, amen, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Amen. That means to be free from sin, means to be free from the guilt of sin, means to be free from the charge. Amen. We've been set free through the blood of the Lamb. And who the Son is set free is free indeed. And that's what the enemy despises. He despises the, this liberating truth. He despises uh, it when he sees the people set free from sin and his grip in their life, amen, delivered even from the, from the flesh, amen, and anything that the enemy would use against us, the world, amen, the, even the law, amen, were delivered from anything that would hold a penalty and a curse over us, every curse, Every curse was broken at Calvary. The curse of the law, no matter what type of curse it is. You can call it a family curse if you want to, but all curses were broken, broken at Calvary. You don't have to use the excuse anymore. Well, my dad always drank Bud Dumber, so I feel like I have to also, but yet I want to claim salvation. You can't continue to play in the devil's playground and maintain a a testimony of salvation. Every curse, even that curse of Bud Dumber, amen, Jack, Jim, and all of them, amen, even that curse, that bondage was broken at Calvary, amen, if you will only believe, hallelujah, quit using the excuse, of, amen, that we got to wait on this deliverance, no, that's just an excuse, amen, believe it today, amen, Romans chapter 6 and verse 11 says, reckon yourself indeed to be dead unto sin, but a Alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's a right now salvation. That's a right now deliverance. But it's predicated upon your right now believing. Don't make excuse. Don't put it off to tomorrow. Believe him today and be set free. Hallelujah. Amen. Now he went on to say there in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23, this, all of this freedom and liberty is, is predicated and conditioned. It's a, it's, we believe in eternal security, but it's not unconditional. Amen. It's conditioned upon us fighting the good fight of faith 
maintaining our faith in the, in the proper object that God honors. Amen. He only honors the, the, the faith that he gave us. He only honors the object that he gave us. Amen. Faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. He went on to say in Colossians 1 and 23, if you continue in the faith, be grounded and settled and be not moved away. Be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature. In other words, the apostle preached this same gospel everywhere he went. I'm going to give you uh, scripture for that and prove it in just a moment. Everywhere he went, every church he preached in, he preached this same gospel everywhere. He didn't change it because of the crowd. Amen. He didn't change it if he went over to Texarkana. Amen. And turned it into a Holy Ghost message. Amen. And I'm Pentecostal to the bone. Amen. But the gospel is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Christ himself said in the gospel of John said when the Holy Spirit comes, said he will take a mind. He will won't come glorifying himself. He won't come glorifying ministers and ministries. He won't come glorifying himself. He will come. He will glorify me. He will speak of me. He will take that which is of mine and he will show it to you. Speaking of that which is, is exclusively belongs to Christ. His atoning work on the cross. His finished work on the cross. That is the work of the Holy Spirit to reveal the true gospel to us. Hallelujah. And he said, don't be moved away from this true gospel. Don't be moved away from the gospel of God. Amen. He said, which is, he said, I preached it to every creature which is under heaven whereof I Paul am made a minister. Oh, if that don't speak to you, I don't know what we are. Paul saying, I, I'm a minister of the cross. I'm ministering Calvary. I'm preaching Christ and Him crucified. I'm determined to know nothing but that. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, He dealt with every type of issue and problem under the sun in His epistles. Amen. But in every epistle, if you will look closely, if you want to see it, if you're hungry for the truth and you want to know the the truth, you'll see that he, he presented the answer to every issue, even, even fornication and adultery and incest. He presented the cross. Amen. What brought them in in the beginning. That's what he was doing. Go back to where you came in. Go back to what you had in the beginning. Go back. This is not the same spirit that has moved you away from the redeeming faith that saved you in the beginning. Beginning. That which I presented to you in the beginning, that redeeming faith, they meant Christ in Him crucified, where I showed you Christ, where you were handed over to Jesus. Go back to that. Go back to that first love. Don't be found loving something that will cause you to be handed over to a strong delusion. Amen. And He went on to say, I am Paul. I, I, Paul, am made a minister of this gospel. Now I want to incorporate 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Look there in the Word of God. Don't just hear me. I want you to see what it says in the Word of God. Amen. And he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, Verse 16 and 17, Paul said, I, I beseech, which means I beg you, I beg you, be ye followers of me. Verse 17, he said, for this cause to make followers of him. What did we already uh, present to you? Paul said, I'm determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. That's what Paul's ministry was all about. And he said to the church, be ye followers of me as I follow Christ. And he said, I beg you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timothy. Amen. 
Amen. That was another determined minister. Paul knew that Timothy would deliver this letter to the church in Corinth, which was in great trouble. They was they had been influenced by false apostles and false brethren, false brethren. Amen. That came down from Jerusalem. Amen. With with letters of commendation and moving their faith away from the faith that they had received from the apostle Paul, moving them over to law and other things. And so he said, I beg you, be ye followers of me. Come back to Calvary. Come back to the cross. If you can't see that there, you don't want to see, you can't see. The Bible says that this gospel is hid to them that are lost. You might want to take a moment, amen, and search your heart, amen, and, and consider the things that's being said, amen, and, and, and reckon within yourself, am I really in the faith or have I been deceived? already and am I going about deceiving others you need to ask yourself these questions today amen today is the day of salvation now is the point in time God is reaching to you God is speaking God is warning and God is reaching but it falls in your lap ladies and gentlemen what are you going to do with what you're hearing today you're just going to turn it off and go on about your own so called merry way just tiptoeing through the tomb and say man you're not going to make it into glory in that field my friends amen man, it's time to wake up, amen, and embrace the truth. Come back to Calvary. Come back to the cross. Come back to the first love that so many of you have left and you've been made to feel comfortable. You climbed Fool's Mountain. When you got to the top of Fool's Mountain, there was a crowd of folks already there making you feel good about your rebellion and the rejection of the truth, amen. That's what's happened to you, so many of you, amen. But Paul said, amen, continue in the faith be grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Amen. But Paul knew that when Timothy showed up in Corinth, he would deliver that epistle. He would deliver this gospel. He would deliver the, the mind of God and the heart of this great apostle just as he gave it to him. He knew that he wouldn't twist it. He knew that he wouldn't distort it. He knew that he wouldn't pervert it. That he would keep it pure and powerful so that the people there in Corinth could be helped. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 5 says listen I've determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified so that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God you there's no power there's no grace there's no mercy there's no help there's no moving there's no work of God apart from Calvary and your faith identified in Calvary, speaking of what Jesus there did. And he said, Amen, for this reason. I send unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord. Faithful in the Lord. Amen. That man that's out there, he's going to look like he's arrogant. He's going to look like he's got a bad attitude. Amen. He's going to look like he's, uh, uh, you know, in a warfare. Well, he is. Amen. He's determined not to know anything. In, in, so you see anything but Christ in him crucified. So that apostate church labels that man, amen, as being having a bad attitude, amen, because they're not coming their way anymore. He's gone, he's got his eyes locked in on Calvary, amen. He's he's locked in on the truth, he's locked in on what the, the apostle Paul has said, amen. He's not going to budge, so he looks like he's arrogant. He he presents himself as, as being uh, having a bad attitude when really he just simply determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified and he's doing what the Bible says he's avoiding these influences he's turning away from the deceivers amen he's got his eyes locked in on Calvary hallelujah and so Paul said this young man Timothy he might be young but he's faithful in the Lord amen he He's my beloved son, faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance 
of my ways. What's Paul's ways? Were they described in 1 Corinthians 1.17 and verse 18. Amen. He said, Christ sent me not to baptize or to be involved in any other type of religious activity. Amen. Circumcised, baptized, whatever it might be. Feasts of that day which was so far popular. Amen. Because Christ is our feast. We're feasting on the Lamb. Somebody ought to shout this morning. Amen. Well, there's a table that's been set before us in the wilderness uh, where we can come and dine. The Master calleth. Hallelujah. Come and dine. The Master calleth. And we come and we feast upon the Lamb. We come and dine upon the truth whereby we can find ourselves established in the faith. Glory to God. Thoroughly furnished and equipped for every good work. Only the there. Only at Calvary will you grow spiritually. Amen. Any other place, you're just going to be dumbed down. Amen. You're going to be climbing Fool's Mountain. It's going to be a lot of There's a lot of people climbing Fool's Mountain today. You don't have to climb with them. Come back to Calvary. Sit down. Amen. Sit down at his feet. Hear him. Amen. Gaze upon him. Glory to God. Hear what the word of the Lord is saying in this final album. He said, Tim he shall bring you into remembrance of my ways. Paul said, I, Christ didn't send me to baptize, amen, but to preach the cross, preach the gospel, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God, the wisdom of God, the testimony of God, and the power of God. Verse 23 Paul said, we preach Christ crucified. Second, first Timothy, first, excuse me, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, we're determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Now look what he said. Uh, Timothy is going to bring you into remembrance of those things as I teach everywhere and in every church. Amen. So Paul is saying here, when I go to every church, every place, everywhere, it didn't matter. I presented what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. I presented the Christ in Him crucified. Amen. That is what I did. He's saying. I, every church, everywhere, all the time. But now let me take it a little bit further. You think that uh, the apostate church and those that were seeking to control uh, the people uh, were just going to let him get off scot-free? No. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 in verse 9 he said we're in he's speaking of in this gospel that he declared because of the cross because of this gospel that I present he said we're in I suffer trouble. And he said, I suffer trouble as an evildoer. Amen. Can you think about that? The very one that God gave the understanding of the new covenant, the understanding of the cross, this liberating truth that we now have. And the thing of it is, he's talking about the, the, the church world, the religious crowd of that day and time. From those are the ones that he said, I suffer trouble. Amen. Even as an evildoer, they treated him as an evildoer. The the church, the that which was uh, the, uh, the religious crowd of that day and time, they treated the apostle Paul as an evildoer. They, they looked at him as a hindrance. And he was a hindrance to what man was building. Oh, hallelujah. God raised up men and women in this final hour, amen, that will hinder, amen, those that will hinder uh, the kingdom of Satan, that will be a hindrance to what he's trying to do in this final hour by being determined to know nothing, amen, but Christ in him crucified so that the people's faith will stand not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. 
He said, I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But he said, but the word of God is not bound. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You might shackle us to a wall. Amen. You might shut us up in a prison. You might turn many from us in our voice. In Noah's day, everybody moved over to the other side of the mountain. Amen. So that they wouldn't have to hear the, the cry of the preacher of righteousness they would have to cry, hear the cry and the pleading of, of God's messenger in that day and time to come and get on board God's ark. Christ and Him crucified is God's ark today. God is in Christ, amen, redeeming humanity back unto Himself through the blood of Calvary. Praise God, amen. So look what it says, amen, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Amen. Let's, let's go there and look at that for just a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to flip a page. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's go on over to verse 6. I know it's going to seem like a, a lot of reading. Amen. For what little time I've got left. But let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4 beginning in verse 6. And Paul wrote to the church in Corinth and he said, These things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. Amen. Oh, the church is at a place now, amen, to where it just follows the popularity of men, ministers and ministers, and they do not ask, do you have scripture for that? They, they care not to align it with the word of God. They're not looking to rightly divide, amen, and, and to line everything that they hear up with the word of God in the context of the cross. And, and he said that no that, that no one of you be puffed up. See, those in the modern day church, they have become puffed up. Um, they sit on their, their, their high platforms um, in their lofty uh, ministries in their high places, amen, and, and call the ones that God has sent, amen, to, to, to turn the church back to the cross in the, fi in the final hour of the church age. They sit high and they have flesh has lifted them up. They lifted up their own selves just as what had taken place in the church of Corinth. Uh, they were elevating one another's with letters of recommendation, amen, to the church and lifting up these false apostles, amen, and, and enticing the church to listen to them instead of the words of the apostle Paul. And they became puffed up. And then in their in that state, they began to say, well, the ones, amen, that are lacking unto Paul, amen, he's just a troublemaker. He's just an evildoer, amen. The, the, and all of those that follow him are the same. They have a bad attitude, amen. But, but let me go back to what it says there. And he said in verse uh, seven, for who makes you to differ from a other that and what have you that you did not receive and now if you did receive it why do you glory as as if you had not received it amen this means that they're boasting Amen, but they're boasting in something other than the cross. And he said, verse 8, now you are full, now you are rich. So you see, he's using irony there to say, well, you present yourself as being full, but you're really puffed up. You you have exalted yourself. Amen. And it says you 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 present yourself as being full. Amen. But but you are really puffed up and and you proclaim yourself to being rich when you're really poor spiritually. Amen. You may have robbed the people, amen, and made yourself a riches, brought yourself to a place in, in riches financially, amen, but you're a poor, miserable soul apart from the treasures that we have in the true gospel in Christ and Him crucified. And He said, you have reigned as kings without us. Look at that. Paul said you're 
you present yourself as reigning, exalted as kings, but you've done it without us. We're not, we don't, we didn't have any part in that. When we're not going to have any part in that, you have exalted yourself above the people. You have exalted yourself above the scrutiny of God's word. You have exalted yourself above those that God has sent to preach the truth. Amen. And it says, and I would to God that you did reign, that we also might reign with you. Paul is saying, I wish you did reign. Amen. Like as it as that would take place during the millennial when all of the redeemed, those that embrace in the cross will indeed reign. Amen. And he said for nine, in verse nine, for I think that God has set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed unto death. In other words, Paul is saying, amen, the apostle, amen, is not a position to be exalted, amen, but we have been given a platform form of death. Amen. We, we, we've given our life for the sake of the gospel. We've been, uh, we have been brought to a place of, uh, that is least among the body. Amen. To a place of death. We have given ourselves over to the gospel. We have allowed ourselves to be delivered unto death. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 in verse 12. And he said that this death now works in us us so that life, amen, can work in you. And he went on to say, we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise. Amen. In other words, he's saying you think yourself to be wise. Amen. But you're really foolish. Amen. We are weak. Amen. But in our weakness, the strength of Christ is, is made perfect. Glory to God. In our place of uh, humiliation, in our place of persecution and opposition in our places in those places where our weakness is displayed, Christ's strength is made perfect within us because we're able to endure everything because of the grace and the power and the and the strength of Christ now working within us. Not I, but Christ works in me. But you are strong. You present yourself as being strong. Amen. You present yourself as being honorable. Amen. But we are despised, you see. That's where we are today. Amen. These people that, that say, well, you know, those determined ministers, amen, uh, they, they, they got a bad attitude. Amen. We're more honorable. Amen. We're, we're, we're above all of that. We're lifted up. Amen. Look at us. Look at the great following that we have. Look at the millions that we bring in. That doesn't make it right with God. However, amen, these people are big in big trouble with God and they don't even know it because they've already been handed over to a strong delusion because they love not the truth of the gospel. Amen. And he goes on to say, even to this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor, working with our own hands, being re reviled, we bless. Listen, here's a true man of God, even though they're being reviled by the uh, the religious elite that came down from, uh, from Jerusalem to turn the church away from the teachings of the Apostle Paul to them, to make followers of themselves. Amen. Acts 20 and 30. I hope we'll get there in just a moment. Amen. And he said, uh, and he said, uh, being reviled, we bless. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We, we don't stoop to the level that they have brought themselves to, to. Amen. We just continue to bless the people by being determined to know nothing but this great gospel. We continue to bless the world and the church, those that have an ear to hear the truth and are willing to endure it and turn their way, uh, their ears away from the deceivers and 
instead of turning their ears away from the truth. He said, being reviled, we bless. Amen. We just keep presenting correct uh, doctrine. We just continue to present correct spiritual uh, doctrine and, and continue to stand in this faith and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. We're stabilized. Amen. We got our feet like in concrete over here at Calvary and we refuse to be moved. Glory to God. And he said, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the fifth of the world and are the all scouring of all things unto this day. That word all scouring there is only used once here. Amen. And it means that which we, you would rake to the side. It's, it means those things that you would that you would rake off, that you would wipe off like scum. Amen. We become those things that the, the most of the church now is just raking off to the side, just scooting out of the way, just, just kicking over uh, to, to a corner, kicking over to the curb. Now, once again, he said in verse 14, he said, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Amen. He still desires to lay claim, amen, to the church that's vastly leaving the faith by these influences. He still looks to them as beloved sons. And I warn you, he said, I warn you. See, there's a time when we have to warn the body of Christ that you must turn <coughs> from the direction that you're going. You must turn from those that are influencing you and come back to the truth that influenced you in the beginning. Come back to the spirit of truth. Come back to Calvary. Come back to that first love. Glory to God. And he said, but as my beloved sons, I warn you, for though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, but you have not many fathers. Paul is saying, I love you like a father. Amen. I care for you like a father that will warn his son of the dangers that he's surrounded by, the dangers that lie ahead. Amen. I love you with the love of God. I love with I love you with the love of the Father, which provokes me to warn you that there will indeed be raven and wolves. Amen. Takes me over to Acts chapter chapter 20, in verse um, uh, 27, Paul said, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed unto yourselves, unto all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Amen. To tend to them like a shepherd and a loving father. Amen. To set the table that's been set before us. Amen. To feed them the lamb. To feed them Christ and what he did at Calvary. Amen. Which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in uh, among you not sparing the flock. Now let me stop right there and I hope I can open your eyes with this. You are deceived ladies and gentlemen if you think that these ravening wolves are going to show up looking like a wolf. You're deceived if you're thinking that you're going to spot these. Amen. In your present state. Amen. Of unfaithfulness and rebellion and departure. Amen. You are deceived thinking that when you see these, they're going to show up like ravening wolves. Amen. But it's revealed in that next verse. He said, verse 30, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. That's a perverted gospel. Something other than the exclusive message of the cross. A perverted gospel. Perverted things. Amen. And he said, this is how these wolves are going to show up. They're going to rise up from within the ranks of the body of Christ. Amen. They're going to rise up among yourselves. They're going to be identified as apostles. They're going to be identified as prophets. They're going to be identified as pastors, teachers, professors, Bible college students. 
Amen. He said they will rise up among your own selves. Among your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. Look what it says. To draw away disciples after them. Not after Christ, but after them. Their desires to make a following of them to, of themselves because they want, uh, they want into your pocketbook. They want your money. They want what you can do for them. They desire that, strong, that large following of themselves. And it went on to say, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn you night and day with tears. Those tears means that the apostles Paul's warnings, amen, was drenched with the love of God, amen, the modern day apostate church that has been deceived and has been sent a strong delusion, amen, they would say that this man here, the apostle Paul, just has a bad attitude, he's not getting his way, amen, they would, they would call him all sorts of things, they got a bad attitude, amen. But the thing of it is, God said, this man, he warned you and he had hot tears flowing from his eyes, dripping down his cheekbone, amen. And he said, I warned you night and day with tears. Praise God. Amen. And, and let us be that same church today. Glory to God that's not afraid to warn of the devices and the schemes and the strategies of the enemy. Amen. To the church out there. He's already got the world. Amen. He's coming after the blood ball. He's coming after the cross preaching camp. He wants you back, sir. And just singing a pretty song is not a up. You have to rise up. Amen. Amen. Lock your backbone. Amen. Stand up and, <coughs> and warn of these deceivers and these influencers in, the, in this final hour. Amen. Just nodding your head. Yes and amen. It's not enough. Uh, we appreciate your likes on Facebook. Uh, but what's wrong with it sir, that you can't share it and, and be a part of warning the body of Christ. Uh, amen. When souls are at stake in this final hour, people are being moved away. Amen. There's a great fall in a way you can be part of helping to resolve the problem amen instead of being a part of the problem silence kills amen silence speaks a lot it's time for you to unzip your lips those that know this message begin to preach it begin to teach it and begin to warn of the apostate church and what lies ahead I'm going to quote something from a brother Ron Smith amen he wrote I read it this morning and just kind of hit home with me. Listen to this. It says, appearance now rules. That's how watered down the church is. They're going by sight instead of by faith. And what's the truth? What is the truth? Amen. If it looks big, if a lot of people's flocking to it, if they got a lot of money, if there's a lot of cars on the parking lot, they say, aha, that must be the right thing. So they run and jump on board with that. Amen. And all they're doing is just jumping into a net of deception that the deceiver has set. Amen. But appearance now rules. And those who appear to be successful are elevated to being anointed and blessed of God. That's what the, this appearance is doing. Amen. To these that have been given over to a strong delusion. Amen. They are now these uh, that appear to be Successful, successful, they are elevated and given the title of being anointed and blessed of God. They're given that status, amen, simply because they have risen to become leaders of large churches. Truth is now being evaluated based on ministry status. Where truth now takes a back seat to charisma, to stage acts, 
Compromise has now replaced the truth. That I'm reminded of something that, that told you said, amen, the old cross would have no trunk. The old cross would have no part in the new cross that we see today. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let us have no part in what we're seeing today as it pertains to the downfall of the church. Ephesians chapter 5 Verse 6 and 7, amen, that Paul said, Be not partakers with those. Don't be partakers with those that come bearing vain words. What are vain words? They're words that pull you away from the cross. They're vain. They're empty. They have no power. They, they have no, there's no profit there. Amen. He said, Be not partakers with them. Don't go their way. Don't support it. Don't put a single penny in it. Amen. Turn away from it. The only way that you can influence anyone for the truth is to depart from that religion that you once belonged to. Amen. Don't think the don't don't think that this is going to get any better, ladies and gentlemen. It's not. The Bible teaches otherwise. Second Timothy chapter three and verse thirteen says, "But evil men, listen to it." Second Timothy three and thirteen, "But evil men and seducers." You know who those are? That's who I just read over there in Acts chapter 20 and verse 30. Evil men and seducers, those who are in pulpits and the church leadership that we see today. I know these are hard and difficult and strong statements and words, amen, but I'm trying to sound the alarm and wake some of you up, amen, out of your sleeping slumber, amen. I'm trying to open your eyes to see. <coughs> He said, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. That means they'll grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They'll be deceived even more because God has handed them over to a strong delusion. Amen. That spirit of Antichrist is already at work in the modern day church. That spirit of Antichrist is the spirit of Antichrist. Just the least little thing that you say in opposition to the message of the cross and those that are determined to, 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 to preach anything but that places you in the category of seducing, being led by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, amen. You're now hindering, amen. And that little bit that you're now hindering, you just make one little slur. One little announcement with their, with their troublemakers, their, uh, the, the, and just whatever little statement that you make now, amen, is going to grow more and more. We see that. We have seen that. And we see it more and more. Amen. Evil men, seducers, amen, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You know who these uh, seducers and evil men are? Once again, in case I didn't make myself clear, these are people that claim Christianity, but they despise that determined minister who is warning of the apostate church. Amen. Because if that hits home. There's a rug right there, amen, because they want to get their arms around, amen, the, the apostate church. They want to make buddies and piles. Why? Because it brings in the people, amen. It's a false unity, amen. It's a false love, amen, and it's every bit of it is not of God, amen. They want to build bridges, amen. No, we don't build bridges. We lift up Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. You see, and I, I think it's interesting. Brother James Wilkins said it Sunday morning. You know, they, they, the, the people that was against John the Baptist, they came a long way out of the city to silence John the Baptist and to turn the people from his message. What was his message? Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. You see that you see the opposition working there. You see what spirit is working there. They came a mighty long way out of the city 
to out in the wilderness, of, out there in the Jordan, amen, where John the Baptist was preaching. They came a long way out of the city, amen, to turn the people from this message. And all he was doing was preaching, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, they come, they still come a long way out of the city. They still come out of the city a long ways. They come out of Baton Rouge. They come out of Cleveland, Tennessee. They come out of Springfield, Missouri. They come out of these religious meccas, amen, to try to belittle the true man of God that's determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified and to influence the people, amen, to turn from us and back to their evil and wicked way. The Bible says that they're of the spirit of Antichrist, amen. They swing the word of God. Brother, another thing Brother James said Sunday morning, if you haven't listened to the message that Brother James Wilkins preached Sunday morning. It's not hard to find if you want to find it. It's on my page. You just scroll back and you can find it there. Amen. They, they swing the word of God without the axe. Second Kings chapter 6 and verse 6. That's where he was preaching from. Second Kings chapter 6 and verse 6. See, they swing the word of God without the axe. Because they want something to hold on to without the offense of the cross. Think about that. Amen. They preach love. They preach grace. They preach all of that. Amen. And they preach the word of God. But it's outside of the context of the cross. They want something to hold on to without the offense of the cross. They want to swing the word of God without the axe. And in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 6 said, The man of God took, he took a crude looking stick, which speaks of the cross. It's a crude thing. Amen. It's a crude looking thing. Nothing uh, except us which have been redeemed. Nothing really pretty about the cross except us which are, uh, are saved. We can't get our eyes off of the slain lamb. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's altogether lovely to us that are clinging to the cross. Hallelujah. He's the one we love today. Falling madly in love with him again today over and over and over again. Hallelujah. But that crude looking stick which speaks of the cross, when it was cast into the problem, it says the axe head swam. <laughs> the iron swam. Amen. The axe swam. Amen. You see, the church doesn't want to cut down anything today. The church just wants to make buddies and piles with everybody. Oh, don't let us be an offense. Amen. The church was, we don't want to do anything that's a rub. Amen. We don't want to, we don't want to be swinging the axe head that John the Baptist swung and Gideon uh, was swung. We don't want to swing anything that's going to cut anything down. Amen. You see, the church doesn't want to cut anything, but, but include everything. They want to include everything. That's that spirit of Antichrist. That's that spirit of unity. It's a false unity. It's a false love. Amen. They, they want to build bridges and they call it grace. They call it unity and they call it love. Amen. These are the key words for compromise today. Amen. Yes, they say, well, we preach the cross. We just put emphasis is on love. We put emphasis on grace. Let me tell you something. It's not the love of God and it's not the grace of God apart from the emphasis and the focus being upon the cross. Amen. It's not of God. It's not the gospel of God. Amen. They, they, they desire to do that rather than focus upon the truth and righteousness. Amen. Let's look real quick. I know I'm holding you over time today, but let's, let's look real quick over to Titus chapter 2 in verse listen to what he says here in Titus chapter 2 verse 11 and 12 he said for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men he said teaching us and equipping us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust 
We should live soberly and live righteously and live godly in this present world, an evil world that I might have, but we can't do that. Amen. If we make buddies and piles with every false teacher, every false minister, every false ministry out there, amen, it cannot be done. We have to come and set ourselves apart from those who are ministering leaven. We have to set ourselves apart from those who are ministering a mixture and soddening down the truth and watering down the gospel. Listen, amen. God told Gideon in Judges chapter 6, verse 25 through 26, to throw down the altars of Baal. That means to cut them down. To throw down the altars of Baal. Let your fathers, uh, that your fathers had, had made, and cut down the groves that is by it. Amen. They put up a golden cow. <coughs> they put up an altar unto Baal. Next thing you know, there's groves of altars. That's what's happened. That's what happens. The moment that you been, begin to pet one golden cow, the moment that you begin to corral and feed and keep up one golden cow, next thing you know, you got a whole herd uh, of golden cows in your pasture. Amen. That's what happened there. And God told Gideon, said, you cut down the altars of Baal that your fathers have made and cut down the groves that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord your God upon the top of the rock in the ordered place. Hey man, what is that? What is the top of that rock? Is that pierced rock? It's Calvary. It's the gospel that we can stand upon today. That firm foundation, that's the only thing that's going to stand during the great shaking that's going on in the church world in this final hour. Amen. Anything else is sinking sand. Oh Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. That, and he said in that ordered place. What is that ordered place? Amen. It's that commanded place. That ordered place. What is that commanded place? Jesus said, deny yourself to take up the cross. There's that commanded place. There is that ordered place. Deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow me. Do it daily. Be found camping out, standing. Amen. Resting upon that rock, Christ and Him crucified. Be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Amen. But endure to the end. Amen. Our devotion must be to Christ. Christ and to Christ alone by taking up his cross always. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 11. For we which live are always delivered unto death. For Jesus' sake, that the life also, amen, not just mere, I don't want to use the word mere because it's a great thing, not just for salvation, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Hebrews 2 and 1 says, Therefore, and I'm closing with this, I always have much more. I had to skip a few things, amen. But praise God, if unless the trumpet sounds, amen, I'll be back, amen, tomorrow night. Glory to God. I encourage you to join with us tomorrow night as we gather at Crossway Ministries at 630 We'll be broadcasting the Continuum for the Faith broadcast. Amen. Brother James Wilkett, Brother Jonathan Melton will be joining me at 630 live right here on Facebook. Don't miss it. We'll be preaching against the cross. Excuse me. We will be preaching the cross and warning against anything and everything that is not. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Ladies and gentlemen, sinners and saints, therefore, we are to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard today, lest at any time we should let them slip. Don't let it slip today. Hallelujah. Grip it with everything that's within you. Hallelujah. Finish that course that God has set before us. Keep the faith. Fight that good fight of faith. Be determined to know nothing else. Glory to God, and God will see you all the way to the end. 
praise God when we stand before a righteous God, a righteous judge, and there, hallelujah, will be given a crown of righteousness. Not to me only, Paul said, but to all of those who love his appearing. And that's speaking of those that love the truth and love that heavenly vision that we have been given. Our eyes are always locked in on Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. Amen. Love his appearing day after day, all the time, always, moment by moment. Praise God. Love you, each and every one. Do hope to see you back here tomorrow night at 6.30. Amen. God bless you. Love you, each and every one.